All right, guys, today we're gonna talk about triggering this one emotion to close more deals in high ticket sales. So let me give you an overview of the two emotions that are highly motivating for, for, for people. There's two emotions, there's two motivational things that push people to make a decision. So the first one is avoiding pain. The second one is gaining pleasure. Now here's the deal, those are the two things that motivate people. You look at anything that motivates you, that makes you wanna do something, it's to do one of those two things. It's to avoid pain or to gain pleasure, or both. That's why we eat, that's why we sleep, that's why we do everything, is to avoid pain, gain pleasure. There, I just explained human motivation in 30 seconds. So let's dive a little bit deeper in what this really looks like for sales. So we're gonna talk about pain specifically because Eliminating pain is the strongest driver for people to make decisions. It's more stronger than even gaining pleasure. Eliminating pain, moving away from pain, is the strongest motivator a person can have. So we're gonna talk about pain, and in the sales process, what does it really look like to bring this pain out? Why do we do it? And what happens as a result? So this is what we're gonna talk about now. There are a lot of closers that are really nervous and afraid to bring out pain in people. I see this a lot and it, it blows my mind. People are just nervous about, they don't want people to feel bad. Here's the deal, we all have pain or have had pain at some point in our, our lives. It's part of the human experience. We all have pain, we're gonna have pain. It's the deal, so get used to it. Now, your job as a closer is to be a leader and help that person get out of their pain. Here's what happens, a lot of us get stuck in pain and what do we do? We sedate, we try to think about other things, we drink, we eat, we do whatever to try to make the pain go away at least for a little bit. This happens with a lot of humans. So they're doing all these things, trying to not acknowledge the pain being there. Why? Because it's painful to acknowledge the pain. But that's what we have to do to remove it. So this is part of the psychology. Now you will see a lot of prospects that'll hop on a call and they're gonna be a little apprehensive, a little hesitant to talk about their pain. They just met you, totally cool. So what we need to do is we need to build trust with them by asking more questions about their pain. A lot of times people don't even realize the pain that they're in. So there's a few questions that I ask them to really understand their pain because I don't know what their pain is, I need to understand. For me to help them, I need to understand everything about their pain so I can give them a solution for the problem. That's how this works. So I'm asking them either right now, they can either tell me like initially, yeah, here's a problem that I have, or here's a goal that I have that I haven't reached yet. And I'm asking what stopped you from reaching that goal? That's how we start to understand what's the pain point, what's holding them back, what's really bothering them, right? So that's what we got to understand. Once I identify that, and people tell me, once we identify, okay, this is a pain point, you can tell it bothers them, you can hear it in their voice, they, you just know. So then I'm asking them for more context. I'll ask them, how long has this been a problem for you? How long has this been a pain point for you? Whatever it is, that gives me more context. It also asks them, like, really, how long has this been going on? And they may say, oh, a couple months, or they may say, you know what, this has been going on for 30 years. If they've had a pain point that's going on for 30 years, that's a problem. And again, very motivating to at least admit, yeah, this has been going on for a long time, I haven't found a solution for it. So, that's the first thing I'm asking. What's the pain? And also, how long has this been going on? It gives me context so I can understand, it also helps them understand. Next, I'm asking, honestly, what has this costed you? What has this pain point costed you? What have you lost as a result? What haven't you gained as a result? When there's a pain point, there's a cost associated to it. Happens every time. So I'm asking them this question, what has it costed you? So let's give an example. Let's say someone is trying to lose weight. They've been trying to lose weight for 20 years, haven't found a solution for it. Okay, so what is it costing them? I can ask this question to 20 people, I can get 20 different answers. I can say, well, it's costing me happiness, it's costing me confidence, it's costing me the ability to get laid, it's costing me ability to have fun with my kids, it's costing me this, costing me that, it's costing me all of these things. So now understanding that, me asking them, what has it costed you? They know, I know. So now we have more context, we have an understanding here, this is what they're losing out. I mean, imagine someone trying to lose weight and 
they're losing energy with their kids. How do you think that feels to know that you have kids wanting, running around wanting to play with you and you don't have the energy to play with them? That doesn't feel good. So again, we want to understand what really is the problem here. What is the pain? Let's say for a business example, a lot of times if there's a pain point in business, it's costed money and you, usually a lot of money. So how much money has it costed you? Like seriously, 3K, 30K, 300K, 3 million, what? Like what's been really the cost here? People tell me all the time, like, yeah, this has been a problem. And honestly, this is what this has costed me. It's a lot of money. Should we fix this? So next, next, I'm asking, what have you done to fix this problem on your own? What have you done to get rid of the pain on your own? What have you done? And a lot of times people will share with me, well, I've tried this, I've tried this. Yeah, then I say, but, so you've tried all of these things, but has it worked? Has it fixed the problem? And then they say, no, no, it hasn't. So again, this helps me understand and helps them understand. They've tried to make attempts to get rid of this pain, yet what they have done hasn't worked. So it helps them understand, okay, what they've done hasn't worked. They don't know how to fix the solution. They don't know how to fix, excuse me, they don't know how to fix the problem. If they did know how to fix the problem, they would have already done it. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm asking them, what have they done to fix this on their own? It creates some more doubt in themselves saying, okay, look, like I wanna take care of this problem. I don't know how to, because obviously what I've tried hasn't worked. So now we understand that they're stuck. That's important. If we wanna motivate people to make a decision to move forward, we gotta understand, are they stuck, yes or no? Here's another question that I ask them. I say, okay, if this pain's been going on for 20 years, five years, whatever, Honestly, what happens, because you've not found a solution for this, what happens in another 20 years if you don't find a solution to this problem, if the pain's still there? Because let's look at the track record. For the past 20 years, you've tried to fix this, and what you've done hasn't worked. It's been going on for 20 years. So logically, since nothing has worked, can we reasonably expect that this will continue because you haven't found a solution? Is the solution going to magically appear out of the sky, fall right on your head? Probably not. Right? So, like, honestly, help me understand what happens for the next 20 years, five years, five months, whatever it is. Like, what happens if you don't fix this problem, if the pain's still there? What happens? And they'll tell you, yeah, here's what happens. There's a cost associated with this. And then brings the pain out more, helps them realize, helps them see an understanding. Holy shit. For five years, I've had this problem. I've not found a solution to it. So what makes me think that I'm gonna magically find it in five more years? If I don't make a decision, if I don't act now, it's gonna keep on happening and I'm gonna keep having this pain. It's a very powerful motivator. That leads me to the last question I ask is honestly, why is this urgent for you? Is it urgent for you? So we've realized you've had this problem, you have this pain, you haven't found a solution to it. If you don't do anything about it, it's gonna keep going, logically, that makes sense. Is this really urgent for you? Helping understand that is very motivating as well. Okay, this pain is this painful to me that I'm ready to make a change because I can't stand it anymore. So again, to wrap everything up, here's why we're diving into pain, here's why we're asking questions. Number one, as a closer, you need to build trust with them. People aren't gonna buy your product because you asked them how the weather was. That's not building trust. Building trust is you asking them questions and they realize subconsciously you understand what their problem is. That's the game changer because probably no one else really understands their problem, but you do. So now you have the trust. Good job, you have their trust. Now they also understand here is how painful this really is. Here's the problem and here are all the costs with it. This is something that I need to change, that I wanna change, and I wanna do it now. This is part of the journey, so we're building trust. We're also getting them to understand with context, this is what the problem is. We can't fix it. I'm ready to make a change. So now we're giving them all of this context, building you trust. This is what brings a motivating decision to move forward, to change something, to act now that will help you close more deals. And then once we have that, then you can bring your offer in, explain, here are your pain points, here's how my offer solves the pain points. Boom. That's how you get deals. Now, 
Now, if you liked this video, link and subscribe. Check us out here at Wake Up Wealthy. If you have any questions for me on sales, hit me up. I'm easy to access on Instagram. Hit me up at brandon.gif.